Good morning. It's a good Monday. Hope you're doing well. I uh, want to give you a little, little housekeeping um, schedule in the next couple of weeks. Uh, today, will, this week will be normal. I'll be around all this week. But next week, a week from today, from Monday, uh, I will be out of pocket because I will be starting a camp meeting revival at Salem Camp Meeting south of Loosedale, Mississippi. So uh, if you're around Loosedale, Gulf Coast area, we'd love to see you. Uh, I'll be preaching Monday night and then every twice a day through uh, through that Sunday, the 13th. So um, we'd love to see you if you're on Loosedale, the Gulf Coast area. Come come over to Camp Meeting. It's always a good time to be had. But uh, I'll be kind of out in the country, so I won't be able to um, uh, do my rooted. So I will be out next week. So I just want to give you a heads up that uh, this week will be normal, but then next week I will be um, at Camp Meeting, and then we should be normal the rest of the year, I believe. Uh, I have one week where I've got some doctoral work I've got to do that might – I don't know how that's going to work out schedule wise. So we'll, we'll see. Uh, maybe I'll get it done. We'll, 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 we'll cross that bridge when we get there in a couple of weeks. So anyway, today we're going to finish out. I'll, it's broken into two sections, but I really wanted to just basically read through the rest of chapter, um, chapter to the rest of chapter eight. I'm sorry, chapter nine. It just fits so well together. So let's read chapter nine. We're going to read um, 13 through uh, 41. So a good little chunk. Uh, 13, 40 through 41. Remember, Jesus healed. Um, healed the man born blind Friday. We talked about that. So let's uh, see what happens next. They brought him to the, they brought, they brought to the Pharisees, the man who had been born blind. No, it was Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. And the Pharisees also began to ask him how he received his sight. He said to them, he put mud on my eyes. Then I washed and now I see. Some of the Pharisees says, this man is not from God for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So again, they said to the blind man, what do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, he said, he is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been been blind and received sight until he received, and had not received sight until he, they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked him, how is your son, who, was, who you say was born blind, how then does he now see? His parents answered him. We know that this is our son, and we know that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is how he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews. The Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, he is of age, ask him. For the second time, they called the man who had been born blind, and they said to him, give glory to God. We know this man's a sinner. He said, I do not know whether he's a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, I now see. They said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already. And would you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples? They revived him, saying, you are his disciple, but we are the disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here's an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to the one who worships and obeys his will. Never since the world has begun has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, you were born entirely in your sins, and you were trying to teach us. They drove him out. Jesus heard they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him. The one speaking to you is he. And he said, Lord, I believe. Then he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came to this world so that those who, who do not see may see, and those who see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees heard him say this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would, have, you would not have sin. But now that you say, We see, your sin remains. So um, Jesus healed this man. Uh, he's born blind. And you see, once again, as you see throughout John, do you, do you see how many times in John we see this boiling tension between Jesus, Jesus and the religious leaders? It's just, it's the constant refrain and the constant battle in John's gospel is the battle between Jesus and the religious leaders, just over and over again. And to call it a battle indicates it's not really a battle. Jesus didn't want to fight with them. They're wanting to fight with him. <laughs> he just kind of wanted to do the will of God, and they're the ones fussing with him. So here we see this man who was born blind that Jesus healed. They drag him in before the religious leaders, and they say, hey, what's going on? He said, well, he's a prophet. He healed me. 
And they go to his parents and they say, well, he really wasn't blind, was he? And they're like, oh, you ask him, he's of age. See, everybody's afraid of their religious leaders. And that's, I think that's the thing that's, um, God bless the man born blind. He wasn't afraid of them. They were threatening and they were fussing and he wasn't afraid of them. <laughs> In fact, he says, first off, he says he's a prophet. They didn't like that. Verse um, 17, they said he's a prophet. <laughs> then he says, uh, um, 30, here's an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worshiped him. And they say, and they basically say, you're trying to, you're, you're a sinner. You're telling us what to do. And so remember, and this sinner is more of a um, reflection on lifestyle. It's uh, sinners. were not just those people who sinned, but those who had lifestyles that were considered unclean or were sinful. So this man would be sinful because he, they believe he was fooled by God and fooled by Jesus rather. And I love what Jesus says in the end. Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say we, we see, your sin remains. Jesus holds a mirror up to us. He shows us who we are. And I think that's what's significant in Scripture over and over and over again is that Jesus sees people for who they are. He sees the man born blind for who he is, someone desperate to see. He sees the religious leaders for who they are, people desperate to hold on to power, no matter what the cost. He sees the disciples who want to follow him for who they are as people who are desiring to know truth. He sees the crowds for who they are. He sees Pilate for who he is. He Jesus sees people as they are. He sees them for who they are. Today, he sees you for who you are. He sees your imperfections. He sees, he sees beneath the surface of the facade that we put up. He, he sees beneath our strengths and our weaknesses. He sees beyond our victories and our defeats. He, he sees us in the loud and boisterous places, and he sees us in the quiet, alone, and afraid places. Jesus sees us, and he loves us. I love what Paul says so much in 1 Corinthians 13. Where Paul says, now we see us through a mirror dimly, but soon we will see face to face. Now we know only in part, but soon we shall know fully, even as we have been fully known. And I, I love that concept that there's going to come a day, y'all. There's going to come a day when the veil of flesh has been lifted, when sin is no more, when brokenness is no more, and that we will know God completely, even as God has known us completely. God knows us completely. He knows our thoughts before we think them. He knows our words before they're on, on our mouth. God knows us. He knows our fears, our doubts, our worries, our inadequacies. He knows it all. He knows it all. He knows and sees it all. He loves us. He loves us. In spite of everything, he sees us. And he loves us. He sees this man today and all this man had given up to follow him. And he loves him. And he says, you know who you are. You know who I am. So now you see. The religious leaders wouldn't have the faith. They wouldn't have the faith to believe. They wouldn't see. And they were bl They remained blind. They remained blind. Surely, surely we're not blind, are we? Yes. Yes. In a, the first step to seeing to admit that we can't. First step to growth, 
is to admitting that we need to grow. The first step to forgiveness is realizing that we need to be forgiven. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was blind, but now I see. When we realize that we can't see, we can learn to see. May each of us today come to see. To see who we are. And to see how much God loves us. Thanks for being with us today. Tomorrow we're going to pick up with John uh, chapter 10. It has one of my favorite verses in all the Bible in it. So I can't wait to unpack it with you. Have a great rest of your day. See you.